Case 13. Alright, so, again, it's loading, but we can see from this uh, top piece, at least, that the entire dermis is filled with, like, this pink, kind of amorphous material again, uh, greedier face, so something is just kind of pressing up on it and taking those away from us. Lots of fissuring or cracking, and so um, I think this is good for nodular amyloid. Very good. This is amyloidosis in the dermis, and here it is making a nodule. So this is a, a little bit of a confusing terminology, I find, but, but here we'll look at the amyloid first, then we'll talk about words. So homogenized amorphous pink material. Sometimes there are other things that make amorphous pink deposits, and uh, multiple people have asked me, please make a video comparing all of these, and I've kind of put it off because they are challenging, and so i got to put together some good cases, and it's actually a little hard sometimes to explain. Amyloid, I feel like, is often a little easier uh, because you've got the nice cracking artifacts. So just like the keratin-derived amyloids, they make cracks, so does the light chain-derived amyloid, the, the true amyloid that we see in association with uh, systemic amyloidosis sometimes in li light chain uh, amyloids, okay? You get these cracks, but look at it. It's not just in the papillary dermis. It goes way down and fills up the dermis in this case. So sometimes you get the fuse filling of the dermis in amyloidosis. Sometimes you just get perivascular deposits of amyloid, okay? And we've got the cracks, but we don't have the pigment trapped within them, okay? So this type of amyloid is usually going to be light chain derived amyloid. There are some other types of amyloid though that are not light chain. One example that I've seen is uh, insulin associated amyloid. It's usually down in the subcutaneous uh, fat on the abdomen of diabetics who inject themselves with insulin and over the years they get buildups and deposits and it looks just like this but it's filling up the fat and trapping the fat and uh, I've, uh, I've seen a couple cases of it where I was worried about systemic amyloid but then I saw it was a nodule in the abdomen and the patient was diabetic and so that's why usually when I find amyloid where I'm where it's diffuse and filling the dermis or is in the subcutis um, anything that's not obvious keratin amyloid I usually send it for mass spectrometry which can identify what type of amyloid it is if it's light chain or AL amyloid and that then the patient needs to get worked up to rule out systemic amyloidosis if it's like you know uh, other type of amyloid like uh, insulin deposit well then that's not associated with anything systemic um, uh, amyloid wise okay so I think it's really helpful if you have access to that in um, in your practice the mass spec I send out for that and it's nice because we get an answer because a person who has light gene amyloid is going to get significant additional workup and they may potentially have a very serious and potentially life-threatening disease, okay? So in the, this brings us to the question of what is nodular amyloidosis? I think it's confusing because it sounds like the, the name looks like it should be a nodule. Well, yes, it is, but nodular amyloidosis is the term that refers to light chain amyloid that is forming skin deposits but is not systemic. It's only in the skin. It is on mass spec identical to the kind of amyloid that you see in systemic amyloid. Both of them are produced by clonal plasma cells. Both of them are made of light chain. Both of them are AL type amyloid on mass spec. Okay, both of them look identical microscopically. Both of them stain with conga red and get that apple green biofringence if you have the right setup on your scope and really bright light source. Again, that's one of those things that look beautiful in textbooks, but I think is actually harder to demonstrate in real practice. They're both positive with thioflavin T and other amyloid stains, etc. Okay, but if you do a, the if you do a bone marrow biopsy or clinical workup. These patients won't have amyloid anywhere else. It will just be in the skin. And one clue to nodular cutaneous only light chain amyloid is the presence of plasma cells within the infiltrate. So the idea is that they are still clonal plasma cells, but for some reason, they're just hanging out in the skin and they're locally making the amyloid here. Some of these patients will later develop systemic amyloid is my understanding from reading. So I feel like these patients do need to get followed probably uh, to make sure that they don't have systemic amyloid and they do need workup to rule out systemic amyloid. But I have seen patients with this that even 10 years later have normal cardiac function, normal bone marrow biopsy, no other evidence of progressive disease and that just have skin only deposits of amyloid that look like this and are light chain and have plasma cells. And um, these plasma cells, I believe, will show up as clonal on a kappa and lambda in situ hybridization. 
Um, that's my understanding. It's been a while since I've seen a case, but uh, but yes, that they should. They usually are clonal plasma cells that are depositing the amyloid, the light chains here, but it's just building up in the skin. So in any case, that's the kind of process I go through to work it up, and I usually have to write a comment to explain. So can systemic amyloid make nodules that look just like nodular amyloid? Absolutely. So to me, the only way to distinguish these definitively is to work them up, do the bone marrow biopsy, and the additional clinical workup steps to exclude systemic amyloid. But one clue is the presence of plasma cells here in the middle of the infiltrate, okay? So there we go. I hope, I, I hope I've explained that well enough. I find it really hard. It took me well into practice to wrap my head around it. Um, all right, so this is a good example. A nice cracking artifact here, right? And there is one other thing that looks a little like this. It's called colloid milium that I still don't fully understand, but it's kind of like a degenerated nodules of protein and solar elastosis mixed together. And I've seen a case of, actually it ended up being systemic amyloid, that deposited in an older person in sun-damaged skin that looked kind of like this, uh, but but actually because of the elastosis, I thought it was going to be a colloid milium, but then we did uh, mass spec, it was amyloid. So if you're thinking about colloid milium, always keep amyloid in mind that if there's any doubt, send it out and do mass spec. I, I find mass spec to be really uh, helpful for working up these cases. All right.